Aia. I am running really bad tonight. Tonight is the grand opening of the Circa Hotel, Casino, massive sports book, assumedly shops, definitely restaurants, and uh, slot machines. Property is beautiful, but uh, I guess like on night one, as expected, a little bit of uh, logistics issue. I walked in there, uh, backpack in tow, as a professional poker player might do on an everyday basis. Walked in there, there was a line to get in, check the temperatures, great. Uh, no issues with uh, said backpack as I walked in, but apparently security, once we were in there and uh, we were hanging out for like 30 minutes, bought a beverage, 30 to 45 minutes later, security uh, was notified that there was a, a fellow with a backpack on, on the casino floor. And so uh, I had to exit the premises and walk back to the uh, downtown Grand where I parked the car. That is uh, run bad situation one. Run bad situation two. I played poker at the Bellagio before coming here. So I had heard that there was a, a fellow in the game who was uh, having a, a grand old time. And in this hand, that player opens up to $70. That's a 7x raise in the 510 game. Looked down at King, Queen of Diamonds. We're gonna have to flat call here. We're gonna have to uh, play this hand and take this one to the streets. I flat call everyone else folds. So heads up to a flop, which comes queen high. Our man bets $270. Well. Uh, I think we have a call on our hands. Uh, I'm not too sure what else we can do here. Folding seems out of the question, raising out of the question, we flat call. Turn is the jack of spades and he immediately bets $470 without thought. Immediately bets the 270 on the flop, immediately 470 on the turn without even seeing the card before it's even peeled off. I try talking to him a little bit. I try to get a read as to uh, what's going on here because this is literally, I think, my second hand dealt into this game here at the table. Uh, trying to get a read and he seems quite confident. He had just got dealt pocket aces in the immediately preceding hand. He won that hand, and then this hand, bombing away again, and uh, seems pretty comfortable. So I decide to let it go, since we can't even be queen jack anymore. I decide to let it go, and once again, my opponent shows down pocket aces. Yes, baby! <laughs> lucky you, lucky you. Ah, it's a good hand. Not sure I'm gonna have to do anything different uh, with the king-queen suited there even versus the massive open and the overbet on the flop. This next hand is against the very same player who is developing uh, a bit of a legend status already in the early going. There's a raise to $30 before this player puts in a three bet on the button to $100 and we look down an ace queen off suit. In a small blind, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a four bet. I feel like ace queen is gonna do okay in this exact situation. So I put in a four bet to $300 out of the small blind. The initial raiser folds and the aforementioned player on the button makes the call. So heads up to a flop, which comes down ace, jack, seven. I decided to check it here since I don't think I'm just gonna be able to bet the flop, bet the turn and bet the river or even bet two streets and be able to get all the money in versus a worse hand. So I decide to play a little bit deceptive and check the flop. My opponent puts out a bet of $300. Pretty straightforward call here. That's what I do, toss in 300 and we are off to a turn card which pairs the jack. So ace, jack, seven, jack now. I check it and my opponent this time checks back. Rivers and offsuit six and interesting spot. We could bet for value here. Maybe try and get a crying call from a hand like ace 10. Um, that's probably one of the worst hands that we can get a call from, but I do think that this player, this player profile might have a little bit of a propensity to put in some bluffs on this river, especially after we check the flop. We put in a four bet and then check the flop, check all streets. I think my opponent will try and pounce on some weakness, some percentage of the time. So I decided to put in another check and my opponent shoves all in. Uh, interesting, interesting spot, but um, as the action has played out and as I've under my hand or at least tried to post flop, I don't see myself folding any reasonable percentage of the time. So I don't really think that long before tossing in the rest of the chips and my opponent shows us pocket sixes. Mmm, the old sixes and the old six on the river. Things not going well. Getting wrecked, getting wrecked by this player in particular. So he had just rebought. I, I failed to mention that he had just rebought this hand in particular, he had got stacked the immediately preceding hand, topped up to $1,500, now he's got himself $3,000. One more hand to just kind of complete the story here. I look down at ace-queen off suit once again and make it 30 to go from the cutoff. 
the player on the button makes the call and the player in the big blind who is once again the aforementioned player we have moved into the main game off of the must move this player now in the big blind three bets to sixty dollars this hand in particular i don't necessarily like to just flat call especially when there's a player behind me who's going to call as well i feel like it functions much better as uh, a re-raise or fold type hand obviously not going to fold for the additional thirty dollars and based on what i've seen from this player so far I think another re-raise is in order. So I go ahead and floor bet up to $150. Don't necessarily want to fold them out, but definitely want to put some more money into the pot. We fold out the player on the button, which is great, and the player in the big blind calls, which is also great. So heads up to a flop. Ace, jack, six, all diamonds. We do not have a diamond in our hand, so we flop top pair, good kicker, but a little bit sketchy without having a diamond in our hand. Our opponent checks over to us and we bet $120. My opponent puts on quite a show, thinking for a very long time, picks up his cards, shakes his head, and then makes the call. Not exactly sure what to make of it so far, but the 10 of diamonds on the turn is going to make this a little bit more straightforward. My opponent checks and we're just gonna go ahead and check this back here on the turn. The river is kind of brickish, no more diamonds, no more pairs. Checks it over to us again and just gonna go ahead and take our top pair good kicker to showdown on a four flush board and my opponent shows us eight three of diamonds that's the story tonight uh we get uh, owned again and again by the same player I'd love to see the action love to see it in a 510 game on a tuesday night would prefer to see a little more run good but uh can't really complain get into the game four three thousand nine hundred dollars cash out of the game for one thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars we've got ourselves a loss of two thousand and twenty five dollars the circa hotel casino it's lovely it's very cool we've got a brand spanking new property in downtown las vegas opens tonight logistics needs some work casino looks beautiful Thank you.